And the last poet, and of course I'm not the one with a book or a piece of paper. <laughs> um, Whitman said in his vistas that America itself is a poem. So uh, I'm going to go through a bunch of things that are going to talk about homelessness, uh, tradition, and culture. Um, and it's going to be a mashup between my own poems and uh, Puerto Rican poet Pedro Prieto from the 70s. Uh, what you're going to really notice is that there's not much that has changed since the 70s and 2017 in terms of gentrification, such as in the Bronx or in Brooklyn and in Newark. So uh, it's a mashup of three different poems. On development. It's on fire out there, and I don't feel like writing poetry. There's so many people, I'm speaking to myself more than usual. I'm sweating in this borrowed office with the window closed and the AC on, and I'm not reading. I'm simply pretending. When you look out my window, do you see any of this getting better? Don't tell me the buildings are erecting themselves larger or the city's floors got themselves polished enough to eat off of. The sign says you can eat here if you can afford a plate and they just got rid of poverty right now so I've just been demoted. Problems don't go away, they're just simply shuffled around and now it's just me surrounded by the bunch of yous looking at me. Am I still sick for this liking this progress? I enjoy love, but it's not like my nostrils barely skin the rim of a surface in the audience of me. I'm pruning skin in a bathtub in a street bath, oh, sorry, in a street smart bath bomb solution. I have two hands, one to paddle and the other that paints the red and white stripes on my face. I am a blue canvas with a star over my eye singing, Que bonita bandera. And I bring others with me because my mother told me to. But on the inside, I fear the weight is too much for me when I try to cross this river called North and the city is tied around my ankles. Let me find this other one. All right, so in this mix, I'm starting to talk a little more about the cross sections between the 70s Bronx and the 2017 Newark. Um, so I'm going to start with this little piece entitled Tata, and then it's going to go straight into uh, Puerto Rican obituary. Sorry, I've got 3G instead of 4G. <laughs> but we're all here, we're all family. I love these art artist communities because of that, and I'm feeling that, that artificial fire coming in from across the hallway. <laughs> it's all nice and warm. Tata! Mi abuela! has been in this department store called America for 25 years. She is 85 years old and does not know a word of English. When she looks at me, she says, intelligence. Puerto Rican obituary. They worked. They were always on time. They were never late. They never spoke back when they were insulted. They worked. They never took days off that were not on the calendar. They never went on strike without permission. They worked 10 days a week. They worked and were only paid for five. They worked, they worked, they worked, they worked and they died. They died broke. They died owing. They died never knowing what the front entrance of the first national city bank looks like. Juan. Miguel, Milagros, Olga, Manuel, all died yesterday and will die again tomorrow, passing the bill collectors onto the next of kin, all died waiting for the Garden of Eden to open up again under new management, all died dreaming about America, waking them up in the middle of the night screaming, Mira, Mira, your name is on the winning lottery ticket for $100,000. All died hating the grocery store that sold the make-believe steak and bulletproof rice and beans. All died wanting, dreaming, and hating dead Puerto Ricans who ever never knew they were Puerto Rican, who never took a coffee break from the Ten Commandments to kill, to kill, to kill the landlords on their cracked skulls and communicate with their Latino souls. Juan, 
Miguel, Milagros, Olga, Manuel, from the nervous breakdown streets where the mice live like billionaires and the people do not live at all, are dead and were never even alive. Juan died waiting for his number to hit. Miguel died waiting for the welfare check to come and go and come again. Milagros died waiting for her 10 children to go up and work so she could quit working. Olga died waiting for $5 raises. Manuel died waiting for his supervisor to drop dead so he can get a promotion. It is a long ride to Spanish Harlem, to Long Island Cemetery, where they were buried. First the train, then the bus, and the cold cuts for lunch, and the flowers that will be stolen when visiting hours are over. It's very expensive, it's very expensive, it's very expensive, but they understand. Their parents understood it is a long nonprofit ride from the North Ward section to the Central Ward section to the Southern section, the East and the West section. Juan, Miguel, Milagros, Olga, Miguel, and Manuel all died yesterday and will die again tomorrow. Dreaming, dreaming about Queens, clean cut, lily white neighborhoods, Puerto Rican Lacine, $30,000 homes, the first spicks on the block, proud to belong to community of gringos who want them lynched, proud to be a long distance away from the sacred phrase, que pasa? These dreams, these empty dreams from the make-believe bedrooms their parents left them and their after effects of afternoon television programs about the ideal white American or gentrified American families with the black maids and the Latino janitors who were all well trained to make everyone and their bill collectors laugh at them and the people they represent, which is one died dreaming for a new job. Miguel died dreaming about new anti-poverty programs. Milagros died dreaming about a trip to Puerto Rico. Olga died dreaming about her new jewelry. And Manuel died dreaming about the Irish sweepstakes. They all died like a hero sandwich dies in the garment districts of downtown. At 12 o'clock in the afternoon, social security numbers to ashes, unions dust to dust. They knew they were born to weep and keep these morticians employed as long as they pledged allegiance to the flag that wanted them destroyed. They saw their names listed in the phone directory of destruction. They were trained to burn the, and turn the other cheek by newspapers that misspelled and mispronounced creyes and celebrated when death came and stole their final laundry tickets. They were born dead and they died dead. It's time to visit Sister Lopez again in the North Ward, the number one healer, the fortune card dealer in the North Ward. She can communicate with your eyes and see the late relatives for a reasonable fee. Good news is guaranteed. Rise this table, rise this table. Death is not dumb and disabled. These who love, you want to know the correct number to play. Let them know that right away. Rise table, rise table. Death is not dumb and death is not disabled. Now that you are the problems and over with this world is off your shoulders. Help those who you left behind find financial peace of mind. And in this north place, rise this table, rise this table. Death is not dumb and disabled. If the right number we hit, all our problems will just split and we will visit your grave on every legal holiday. Those who love you want to know the correct number to play. Let them know this right away that we know that this spirit is able, that death is dumb and not disabled. So rise this table, rise this table for Juan Miguel. Olga, Milagros, and Manuel all died yesterday and that will, they will die again tomorrow, hating and fighting and stealing broken windows from each other, practicing a religion without a roof, this Old Testament and New Testament in North, according me to the gospel, to the, inner, uh, to the internal revenue, the judge and jury and executioner, protector, the eternal bill collector, secondhand ship for sale, learn to say to those people down in Prudential, como esta usted? and you will make a fortune. They are dead, they are dead, and they will not return from the dead until they stop neglecting the art of their dialogue for broken English lessons to impress their Mr. Goldsteins. Who keeps them employed as lavaplatos, these porters, these messenger boys, these factory workers, these maids, these stock clerks, shipping clerks, Assistant, mailroom assistant, assistant, assistant to the assistant's assistant, assistant lava platos, an automatic artificial smiling doorman for the lowest wages of the ages. 
and rages when you demand a raise because it is against the company's policy to promote Spix, Spix, Spix. Juan died hating Miguel because Miguel used car was in better running condition than his. Miguel died hating Milagros because Milagros had a color television set, which is now a 3D set. Milagros died hating Olga because Olga made $5 more on the same job. Olga died hating Manuel because Manuel had hit the numbers more times than she had hit the numbers. Manuel died hating all of them. Juan, Miguel, Milagros, and Olga because they all spoke broken English better than he did. Here lies Juan, here lies Miguel, here lies Milagros, here lies Olga, who died yesterday, today, and will die again tomorrow, always blow, broke, always owing, never knowing that they are beautiful people, never knowing the geography of their complexion. Puerto Rico is a beautiful place. If only they had returned and turned off their television and tuned into their own imaginations. If only they had used this white supremacy Bible that we call this reconstruction for toilet paper purposes and make their Latino souls the only religion of their race. Juan, Miguel, Milagros, Olga, all right now will be doing the same thing and all these beautiful people sit here and we sing, aquí se habla español, se habla inglés, aquí we salute our flags and we call this place snork, aquí we call it love. Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about poetry styles that you already write in. I'm just going